Welcome to Season 3 of I'll Go If You Go, a Save the Redwoods League podcast. We're building community and illuminating how Californians from all walks of life think about and experience nature and conservation in the Redwoods and beyond. I'll Go If You Go, because when we explore together in community, the experience is all the more powerful. Welcome to the final episode of Season 3 of I'll Go If You Go. This is your host, Emily Harwitz. Today, we're taking a trip to the Redwoods. No, not those lush green Redwoods of the coast. I'm talking about the other Redwoods, the giant sequoias, of course, of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Our guest today is Agnes Fianzon, the founder and executive director of Eastern Sierra Conservation Corps. Not only do they work in the Eastern Sierra now, but they got their first introduction to the outdoors in Kings Canyon National Park, which is just next door to Sequoia National Park, homelands of the Mano Monache, Yokuts, Tabatulapal, Paiute, Western Shoshone, and land of the giant sequoia. Agnes is a first-generation queer Filipinx. They founded Eastern Sierra Conservation Corps in 2017, which has served over 100 alumni and counting. Every trail that Corps members build, or natural area they restore, creates an opportunity for someone else to connect to the land and the people who worked on it. Plus, Eastern Sierra Conservation Corps is changing the demographics of outdoor stewardship and parks employment and visitation. Agnes says that a cool thing about this work is that you get to love the work you do in beautiful nature and get paid for it. If that sounds like a lot, that's because it is. I can't wait to learn more about Eastern Sierra Conservation Corps. Agnes, welcome to I'll Go If You Go. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's so good to be here. All right. Where are you calling in from and what does it look like outside your window right now? Yeah. um, So actually, currently I'm in Bishop, California, um, also known as Payahunaru, which is uh, translates into the land of flowing water. And literally that today, it's a little bit windy, but it's sunny and there are mountains covered in snow. (laughs) That sounds really lovely. Have the flowers started to super bloom out there? Um, so down lower, yeah, definitely. Um, the flowers are coming out. Um, but up in higher elevation, there is still <laughs> a lot of snow to melt. <laughs> wow. In a couple sentences, how would you describe what you do? <laughs> I know. First question, like, what do you do? And I had to think about it <laughs> a little bit. I'm a partner, I'm a dog mom, I snowboard, I climb, and I facilitate getting young folks into immersive backcountry experiences. So there are over 150 conservation corps in the country. What is a conservation corps and what makes Eastern Sierra Conservation Corps unique? Yeah, so I would say all conservation corps are based off the New Deal, the Civilian Conservation Corps, Um, And at that time, it was actually men only. So I would say cores employ young people, they work outside, do all kinds of different projects, Um, could be urban, could be rural, recycling or habitat restoration, kind of all different partners and types of work. With ESCC, uh, I definitely... I definitely knew it was going to be along those same lines as far as getting young folks, um, working outside, doing good work. Um, But I guess I would say like we wanted to focus one on priority populations, women, women of color, queer, LGBTQ plus, um, but also lead with, you know, sort of the eye of the DEIJ. and have the inclusive environment more at the more at the forefront of welcoming folks. And again, you know, there's a lot of a lot of cores doing good work, um, but I felt like we could also do it and maybe do it a little differently. And ESCC started to get recognized for that. And I know that the first ever core was an all women crew, right? Yeah, yeah, all women, and that was actually that was requested of us to provide an all women crew. You know, and some folks understood like what we were trying to do and how we wanted to do it, and so I certainly jumped at the chance. And at that point, all of my seasons of experience with cores and with the National Park Service, never had I worked on an all-women crew or even had multiple women on a crew I was working on. 
Wow. What was it like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was everything. It was it was just like, oh, this is so inspiring and how amazing. And also it was like, what's the big deal? Like, we're a bunch of folks. We're still getting out there. We're still doing good work. So yeah, I would say it's a little bit of both. Like, it was really cool to be recognized for that. And also it was like, why hasn't this been done before? Explore Redwoods is a portal into California's magical coast redwood and giant sequoia forest. Visit exploreredwoods.org to learn what's available in more than 100 redwood parks and plan an unforgettable adventure. From hiking and biking trails to camping to swimming holes, this web-based app will get you there. Visit exploreredwoods.org. I know that the participants of ESCC are young adults from diverse backgrounds with varying levels of education, understandings of ecology, and comfort levels in the wilderness. And I'm wondering, with that diversity of where people are coming from, how do you build team cohesion on a project out in the wilderness and get everyone on the same page? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the way that we operate is we do need to get a job done. So that's the way that we're able to get contracts and Um, fund our programs or or most of it. And so I would say, you know, first of all, we're upfront about what the job is. It it is going to be conservation work. It's trails, restoration. It's hard. It's hiking and heavy tools. Um, Also, it's immersive. So you are living in your tent, you're sleeping on the ground, you're bathing in the cold creek, Um, but you have what you need. Our leaders are right there as facilitators right next to you. We're living together, working together. Um, so we try to be upfront about the, the challenges of the position. Um, and also we do a hefty orientation. So trails training, but that also includes mental health, resiliency and community meetings and conflict resolution, crew agreements. So kind of the the team building and community side so that we can work well together and get a project done. That's so cool. That sounds fun. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's not all, of course, you know, of course there's bumps along the way, but I think that's a big part of it is figuring it out and learning how to communicate and, and yeah, we're doing it together. Yeah. And for a project where you're spending so much time out in the wilderness with this small group of people, it seems pretty paramount that you get along with and are able to, you know, communicate well with everyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's not cell phone service and you're not going home every night. And so definitely trying to build in things to build that cohesion. You know, of course, everyone's going to come in at a different level and, you know, introverts and extroverts and all of the above. But yeah, starting the foundation with really the common goals. So out on the trails when you're not working on a project, what do you, what is it like, what does free time look like? Yeah. I mean, the, the days are packed, so it's up early and someone's volunteering to cook breakfast and, you know, out to work. Um, in the evening, there's a little bit of time, you know, most folks are tired, but you can read or, you know, some people bring instruments and play music, which is great. The weekends are, are for exploring. Um, also for rest, you know, to rest your body and relax by the creek or the lake or um, take take advantage of being in a location where you could hike maybe not that far to get to the top of the peak or a high alpine meadow. Um, and so really, like, get to enjoy the place that you're being paid to work in. How did you get into this work? I had never I grew up I hardly went camping you know, my parents did take us to like drive up campgrounds. I would say I I never went hiking, Um, didn't really do much of the work that entails, you know, being in a core. And I was graduating from school. I worked a little bit and then decided to take a year off um, and move to Mammoth, you know, and it was supposed to be this like six month you know, gap thing, like a lot of folks do. And I was applying to grad schools, but I also found an AmeriCorps program called the Backcountry Trails Program. And that just really is what launched in into this. And even that first summer, 
It was really impactful. I had a great time. I had a great crew. Or I worked hard and I was tired and I was like, this is great. You know, I don't know that this is for me. I got to get serious, but here I am. Okay. I want to hear a little bit more about your connection with nature because you said that you didn't necessarily go camping or do tons of outdoors stuff when you were growing up, but you found your way to it um, partially through environmental studies classes or, or how would you say, can you tell me about, yeah, you just like. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you know, like it wasn't, I wasn't a big outdoorsy person, you know, and just like the last question, it's like, if you're not exposed to that, how do you have a commitment to protect it maybe? And so again, like when I joined the California Conservation Corps Backcountry Trails Program, uh, I, you know, I definitely didn't know all the things that I was getting into either. But once I was there driving in to, you know, so-called Kings Canyon National Park for the first time and seeing that incredible landscape and all this granite and all these trees and that that's where I was going to live. You know, that's that's when part of it clicked. Um, and that's also why, you know, we we want. It's like you don't you also don't have to do that for five months to get that same experience. And so that's why we sh- we do these shorter trips. But um, yeah, I mean, that's what really got to um, that's what really hooked me in uh, was I got to live and work there. And it wasn't just uh, the work and the nature part and, you know, yeah, working the trails and how that makes it more accessible to hikers and uh, opening up, you know, for people to come and also experience it. But um, it was the community part too. It was the crewmates I was around. We were all doing it together for the first time. It was, you know, my friend Diana, who I wanted to quit that day and was, and before I even said something was like, today was so hard and, but we're going to do this together and we're going to make it. And it was like, yeah, the community, my crew, my, you know, my facilitators, like all of it together was really, um, what just lit the fire of, um, yeah, I, I do like this. I do want to be out here. It is hard, but like, this is amazing. I would love to hear more about what the Conservation Corps work looks like. Like people come and they sign up for this program and then what? So you said that there's an orientation and team building and then what kinds of projects are people working on? Uh, Right now it's a variety, general trail maintenance, opening up the trails, cutting the trees out, brushing, cleaning drains. Also, we do a lot of habitat restoration. We're partnering with the Inyo National Forest and also the JMT Wilderness Conservancy. Is that the John Muir Trail? Yeah, yeah, that's the acronym, but it's it's a nonprofit as well. And so there are illegal campsites, restoration work like around the JMT that we're working with our crews. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a lot of manual labor outside in nature. Yeah, yeah. Lots of manual labor. You're carrying heavy tools, swinging and um, constructing. Like we also have technical crews that do higher level work. And so they might be building stairs, building bridges. Um, Like, yeah, some of the work could be 15 miles away from the road. It sounds tough, but fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And like, again, the, the group is doing it together. So when someone has an off day, Someone else won't be and might try and motivate or support, you know, their fellow crewmate. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What are folks' reactions when you get to the end of a project and you see, we just built a trail or we just restored all of this land and you can actually see with your eyes what you did? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that was one of our projects over the last few years, a completely brand new trail. And so every day that the crew is hiking out to the project site, it's further and further along, along this trail that, that wasn't there before. 
And, you know, we do a lot of work on trails that exist and have existed for tens of thousands of years. But, you know, I think that just really relates to like the season as a timeline coming in and and like me, never hiked, never put on a backpack, never wore hiking boots. And, you know, now you don't even think about it, like how you're brushing your teeth or like how much weight you're carrying and how much faster you're hiking um, and stronger that you're getting. And in the same way, it's not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. Yeah. Can you tell me more about the participants of the program? Like, who are they? Where do they come from? How do you recruit them? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're definitely one of the smaller cores. So a lot of word of mouth. We post on social media. We uh, recruit through our alumni. Um, you know, like I said, we we want to focus, encourage priority populations to apply, give them the, that opportunity. Um, but yeah, we have participants that come from all over the country, you know, mostly California because we're here. But and, you know, we have two types of programs. So one is for brand new, never done anything like this before. And then we have an alumni program where it's higher level technical crews. And so some of those folks have worked with us. Some of them are coming from other conservation corps. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a real mix of, of folks that come from all over and hopefully know a bit about what they're getting into, but willing to commit to that um, mm-hmm. and understand or at least have some understanding of what they might be getting into. And then they really get here and, and they might find uh, they want to keep doing it. What's the age range? So the age range is 18 to 30. Um, most conservation cores are about the same. Some stop, I think, at 25. But we go to 30. I ran across somewhere that that's what the National Park Service defines youth as is under 30. So oh wow, let's go with it. Okay, so... As of this recording, I still have two years left to apply. There you go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm thinking about the alumni, and I'm curious, where are they now? Yeah, definitely. I, you know, in in our – this is our seventh year, and we've had just over 100 alumni now. ESCC forever is our hashtag for alumni because it is, it's something that you're a part of. We, we want to keep in touch. Um, we want to continue to support folks, uh, whether you did one of our eight day, you know, wilderness trips or 18 weeks as a core member, you know, it's an immersive, powerful experience that, that sticks with you. And so a percentage of folks, you know, go back to this type of work. It's something they get hooked on, and that's great. They could come back here. We could help them get a job at the Forest Service or another core. But, yeah, we tr- we try and stay in touch. And the thing is, part of what ESCC, you know, sort of set out, not necessarily set out to do, but we are doing right now, is changing the demographics of leadership positions at, other cores at the Park Service, at California State Parks. I mean, the rates of visitation and employment at national parks, for example, are of a certain demographic. And so a number of our folks are now working at some of those places. So literally changing the demographics of some of the federal agencies. Can you tell me about a memorable trail building project that really demonstrates what ESCC is all about? You know, prepping for this question, I was like, wow, we've we've worked a lot of projects. That's so cool. Um, And there's definitely one that stands out that we worked on um, nearby to Mammoth. And it's the Devil's Post Pile National Monument. Um, So there's a big, you know, geological formation and there's these Uh, there's rainbow falls. So these big waterfalls. And so literally there are millions of people who come to visit um, this destination. And yeah, we had like a highly technical project, super steep, you know, kind of dangerous off of this side of the hill. You know, it was awesome. It was technical. We built steps, all of the trails where our members have been and where we've hiked. And then again, you know, like thinking about all of the people who have hiked those trails in the past and all of those people who are going to hike those trails for years to come. Yeah. There isn't like one project. It really is just like how connected anyone can be anytime they walk a trail. Yeah. That's a really cool thought. It's not just the 
trail building crew because of course you know they're together and they're putting the trail to the ground but everyone who comes to visit them becomes part of that experience yeah yeah exactly that's really cool and like that be- that becomes the legacy mm-hmm. or they can bring you know they can bring their family there they can bring their kids there like yeah 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 okay. There is um there is a day when I volunteered to help build a fence in Redwood Regional Park in Oakland and it was a one day thing and we put the fence post in the ground but I still feel so much definitely a deep connection to that fence and to that area of the park and every time I'm there with a friend or every time a friend says hey you want to go there I, I have to tell them about this fence that I helped to build yeah no exactly I mean because there's a pe- there's a piece of you with that um, that will be there. Yeah. And then it's not about like, you know, staking a claim on the land. It's about the building a connection to it. Right. Right. Exactly. And what are your hopes for ESCC in the future? You know, when when people always ask, so like, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> um, you know, and in no way did I think that this is where we would be five years ago. You know, I wasn't sure. I really set out and was sort of like, well, if it's one conservation crew if it's one wilderness trip and so to be going on multiple seasons of multiple crews multiple trips I'm not really sure like yeah you know like I think we have this little corner of the conservation world and you know the intention is to be collaborative with other cores too so it's like they send us folks we send them folks back that have gone through our leadership program yeah I think that I see maybe a little bit of growth, we we want to expand the opportunities for more people, but uh, certainly am not trying to be, you know, nationwide. California is a pretty big state, and we work all <laughs> over. So, and my last question is, what is one thing that you are looking forward to? It could be anything. Yeah, uh, all of the like paperwork and long days and meetings and. The leadership team is literally going to be here within a few days, and then we're going to have members here in a week or so. And that just makes all of it worth it. I mean, getting them here, seeing their wide-eyed faces and their excitement, you know, knowing some of what they're going to do, but really not, you know, just sort of that, like, they're out in the world right now doing what they're doing, and then they're going to be here, and and then how they leave and go back into the world and what they're going to do, that is just what keeps me motivated and wanting to do this and so special. Well, Agnes, thank you so much for joining us today on All Go If You Go. I hope to see you out there on the trails maybe next next year, next season. Absolutely. We definitely want to see that application or come <laughs> visit one of our crews. We would love to have that. So maybe a part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All Go If You Go or uh, I Went. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Next time you're out on a trail, take a moment to think about who else walked or traveled along that path, and who's going to experience it after you. Also, who might have built the trail in the first place, and who keeps it in good condition? We humans are part of the landscape after all. Thanks for coming along with us this season. Whether you're looking to join or build a community, or just hear some fun stories about exploring the redwoods and beyond, we hope you got some inspiration. One takeaway for me is that building genuine community starts with showing up as your true self. And if you don't know where to start, try finding a community group or starting one. Adventure and relaxation is out there. If you like this podcast, please give us a review wherever you listen. It'll help more people find it and let us know what you like. That's all for now. I hope you all have a wonderful Redwoods, nature, and community-filled summer. And remember, I'll go if you go.